Joining us now is the Dave Campbell's Texas Football College Football Insider. It is Shahan J. Raja. Shahan, how are you holding up? It's a little weird uh, being inside this much. It's a little weird uh, being around my wife constantly, but uh, but you know it's all great things. I, I you know what I think that this uh, this time away has been really good. But uh, you know that we're still keeping it up. Obviously, we're still real busy. Yes, we are. Uh, I feel well, I feel like people are like, oh, you guys are just sitting around. There's no football. It's like no, we're <laughs> there's no sports. There's never football now. That's not not really the point. Right, exactly. Um, you know, you've you've obviously kept tabs on it at, at TexasFootball.com as far as the effect of this virus on um, on college football. Um, I'm not going to ask you to to go into you know every single thing that's been canceled because it's all of it. But but uh, from a from a, a big picture point of view, what has been the impact of this virus on on college football? Yeah, I, I mean, obviously the biggest thing right now is that there's no spring football, and it really doesn't look like that's going to change. I mean, a lot of schools have already gone as far as canceling all the rest of classes for the rest of the semester. A lot of schools have gone as far as even canceling graduations and things like that. We don't even know necessarily if there'll be summer classes. And so right now, a lot of kids are out right now trying to figure out, uh, you know, where they're even going to be in a few weeks. So that means that the kids aren't on campus, you know, the football players aren't on campus. And so Right now, it's going to be an interesting transition for some of those teams that are bringing in new coaches, that are bringing in new coordinators, that are bringing in new position coaches, because there's going to be very little time to actually acclimate. Now, it's not impossible to think that there might be a delayed spring practice, that they might get 15 practices in the summer or something like that. But at this point, I mean, there's no indication that this is going anywhere. So right now, I mean, everybody's just kind of up in the air is really what it is at the end of the day. So, um, you know, and, and I guess, you know, to, to put a, a finer point on it, uh, is it fair to say that teams like UTSA and um, Baylor, who have new head coaches and basically new regimes, they're maybe at a bigger disadvantage uh, than, than teams that maybe have a little bit more continuity right now? Absolutely. Well, and even, even with that, I mean, teams that bring back all their coordinators. So, for example, I mean, Texas Tech heading into year two, I think they're going to have a little bit of an advantage. Uh, you know, Houston bringing back most of their coaching staff. They're going to, I think, have a slight advantage. And you mentioned Baylor and UTSA. Like, these were already teams that we weren't sure what they were going to look like. And now you have the coaching staffs also probably don't know what they're actually going to look like. And especially for a first-time head coach like Jeff Trailer, uh, with, you know, a bunch of first-time coordinators like, like Barry Lunny especially. I mean, this is a critical time to try to install what you want to do, to evaluate the talent that you have on campus. And, and again, especially at UTSA where you're hoping to rely on some of those young recruits who are coming in. This is a critical time to get them up to speed. And if you can't do that, I mean, ultimately, I, I think that you're really put behind the eight ball. Let's talk. You've got a, a great series going up on TexasFootball.com throughout the course of, of the past couple of weeks. It's a kind of way too early predictions, kind of way too early look at a lot of these teams. Uh, now, you know, look, it, it may be all we know. Um, you know, obviously you're going to have boots on the ground, not really boots on the ground. You're going to be on your phone a lot, uh, <laughs> talking with, talking with coaches, uh, but, uh, with no spring practice, you know, these way too early things are suddenly not looking so early. Um, <laughs> but let's, let's, let's start with the one that came out today, uh, here on, on, on Friday, which is about rice. Uh, this is a program that, um, started extremely slow and then arguably finishes the hottest team in the state. Um, as far as your, your way too early look at Rice, what, are, what, are, what do you have your eye on? Yeah, well, the funny thing about Rice is that they are the owners of the longest winning streak in the state of Texas right now at three games. You know, they didn't win a single game for, through their first nine, but then they finish out with three, including two over in-state teams. And look, I, I mean, I think we started to see the vision really come together for Rice in those last couple of games. They ran the ball really effectively. Their defense really stepped up in a big way. I think that the thing that you, are, you have to be most impressed by with Rice is the improvement of their pass defense on the back end, especially. You know, you saw that against Mason Fine in North Texas, holding them to only 14 points. And, and look, the schedule is really tough. <laughs> the schedule is always really tough um, when it comes to Rice. You know, they play teams like LSU, Texas A&M, Baylor. I mean, this is just what they do. They, they always schedule tough. Um, I'm really looking at that second game against Army. Last year, uh, Rice was obviously able to give Army a big, big test. And... I don't think anybody expected that the game was going to be close, but it really did end up being close down the stretch. If Rice can come out in that second game and beat Army, 
I think that that would pretend huge things for their season. And I do think that that is possible. I actually have them mm-hmm. winning that game on, on my way too early prediction. Um, look, when it comes to Rice, they always came in with an identity. They wanted to be able to run the ball. They wanted to be able to control the clock. Uh, and look, I, one thing that I think that we're going to see next week is, is, you know, we're putting out sort of a story where we're talking about some things that you can do during the off season. Uh, you know, one thing that I talked about was that there's actually a great video on how Stanford's rushing attack works under Mike Lindgren. And you're starting to see some of those pieces come together. You're starting to see that personnel come together. Um, and I think that it's really going to mean big things for this program this year. Now, making it to a bowl game is going to be really tough just because of how tough their schedule is and, and how tough Conference USA should be next year. But look, I mean, we talk about teams that have continuity coming back. The Rice Owls are a team that has that. Um, it's Shahan J. Raja, our college football insider, talking some college football here on Texas Football Today. Get involved in the conversation hashtag TF Today. Uh, all right, let's move to another team that obviously um, had a, a great year, a breakout year last year, and that's the, the SMU Mustangs. Um, they are, I think the big question we asked Bill Connolly earlier this week about it is that is this sustainable? Um, you know, they've got their quarterback back. They've got a lot of exciting pieces back there on, on the hilltop. What, what's your early feel for, for the Ponies this year? Well, I think that when you have a quarterback that's as good as Shane Bouchel, you're already starting, you know, from second base. You're not having to start all the way over. Um, and I do think that Bouchel is that kind of player. I think that he proved it in the opportunity he got at Texas and, and obviously getting to play in Rhett Lashley's system last year and under Sonny Dykes, perfect, perfect fits. Now, losing James Proche sucks. Losing Xavier Jones sucks. Uh, on defense, you lose a lot of key pieces like Richard Moore, like Rodney Clemens, guys who have been there for a little while. Uh, but it's not like there isn't talent left. You know, we still have some guys coming in. Uh, you know, Chevin Calloway is a guy from Arkansas, for example, who transferred in, who's eligible next year, who's going to play a big role. You know, Kedrick James is another guy who might not even play a big role next year because Kyle Granson's back at tight end. But he's another piece of talent that you get to put into this program. And you mix that with the offensive talent they already had on campus. They returned most of their offensive line. They returned Buchel. Uh, they obviously returned Reggie Robertson at receiver. Like, this is not a bare cupboard. This is not like they lost every good player on their roster. They lost some key pieces, and they're going to have to replace them. So replacing a, you know, a 10-2 and two season, that's going to be really tough. But, uh, but we don't have to act like there's no talent here. Now, the one thing that's going to be interesting is the transition on offense because Brett Lashley does go to Miami, but they bring in Garrett Riley from App State, who is Lincoln Riley's brother, of course. So it's going to be interesting to see what he can kind of add to the offense. I'm curious to see how much not having the spring practice time hurts them, but it might just mean that they try to lean on more of what they did last year and, and more on sort of Sonny Dyke's concept uh, to try to get the most out of Shane Bichelle's senior season. Um, a guy, a, a team that probably did not get the most out of their quarterback senior season was uh, Mason Fine in North Texas. A uh, disappointing uh, step backwards uh, for the Mean Green in, in 2019. I know that there are high hopes that, you know, they They've held on to, uh, you know, a lot of key pieces uh, of their of their staff, maybe out, uh, of their staff, and then also obviously on, uh, at, you know, outside of the quarterback spot. But um, when you take a look at North Texas, uh, what what kind of strikes you about about the Mean Green? Yeah, well, I talked about teams that are replacing coordinators. This is going to be a big deal for North Texas, in my opinion. Uh, on the defensive side of the ball, they bring in Clint Bowen, who is a longtime defensive assistant at Kansas and a former North Texas uh, defensive coordinator as well. Uh, offensively, hopefully the transition won't be as bad because Seth Luttrell is basically going to be taking over those duties. But you have to try to figure out who you're going to start at quarterback. There's still as many as four guys who we think might have a chance to do that. Jason B might be the favorite, but who really knows at this point? And, and obviously without spring practice, the coaching staff doesn't really know at this point. Uh, defensively, I mean, they lost a lot of production from last year's team, and last year's production wasn't all that good. So you head into, I think, 2020. Um, and, and look, I mean, North Texas had kind of established itself as sort of that 8-9 win team in Conference USA, the type that could compete to play in the conference championship year in and year out. But now it's going to be interesting to see when it comes to that offense, how much of that was Mason fine and how much of that is stuff that's now sustainable heading forward. Um, I think it's going to be a really tough task for them. I think it's going to be a really tough task. And, and I think that, uh, you know, if they can come out and compete in some of these early games and, you know, be average in conference USA, I think that really making a bowl should be the goal next year. I, I, I think that doing less would be a disappointment. Doing more would be a great success, but I mean, it is kind of weird to see North Texas down in this position after their run. And, and I want to wrap up with you with uh, some talk about um, 
I, I called it the most interesting team in the state with Bill Connolly. Uh, that doesn't mean they were great last year. We're talking about the Houston Cougars. Um, yeah. This, uh, I mean, what do you say? I mean, do you have any feel for what Houston is going to be in 2020? Because there's just been such a bizarre, basically nine months for them. Yeah. Well, the thing that you say about them is I believe per Bill's rankings are number three in returning adjusted production. So like they bring back almost everybody. That's, that's the funny thing about all of this is that they do bring back everybody. They also add Keith Forbin back to the mix. They also add Mulba Carr back to the mix. So like everybody's back, right? Like this is just running back that same roster from last year. This is another team that I think really would be hurt by not getting to participate in spring practice, because I think that you look at what they've got right now. I mean, I think that they, really need that development time. That's what Dana Holgerson is betting on with this roster is development. And look, the other thing too, and, and I mean, you'll have to go see the schedule for yourself on, on my article, but oh my God, what a schedule. <laughs> you know, they have one of the hardest schedules that I've ever seen in the group of five. Like they, they play like Cincinnati, they play, uh, you know, UCF, they play Memphis. I think that they, like, they just get everybody. They get absolutely everybody. And they also, I believe, play one or two power five teams in the non-conference slate like holy crap I mean it is really really hard so this team could also be a lot improved and still barely make a bowl or miss a bowl honestly uh it, it's going to be really interesting to see how they grow uh I mean again there's reason to believe that they'll keep getting better especially off of last year I think that Clayton Toon really is a good fit for what Dana Holgerson wants to do eventually I don't know if it's now but I think eventually he is uh, your receiving core should be really good. I mean, I think that the running back core obviously proved itself. Offensive line, after losing Josh Jones, is going to be a little bit more of an issue. And defensively, again, you bring back everybody. And and this unit started to come together late in the year. But, again, especially if you don't have spring practice, it's going to be really interesting to see whether that development happens at the rate that we want to see it. And if it doesn't, man, I mean, they joke that they fire coaches for going 8-4. and four. They're not going to fire Dana Holgerson, nor should they, regardless of what happens this year. But – Things start to get real interesting if you start with, you know, two missed bowl games, for example. He's Shahan J. Raja. He's our college football insider at TexasFootball.com. Follow him on Twitter at Shahan J. Raja. It's spelled exactly like it sounds. Uh, Shahan, appreciate it, my man, and uh, go wash your hands. Stay safe.